And thank you for what you're doing, Secretary Wilkie, as the head of the VA. A couple questions I want to ask you about the, uh, and I don't, are, can we ask a question directly to Ms. Franklin? Dr. Oh, yes. Franklin. Okay. Well, I'll ask this to Dr. Franklin. Dr. Franklin, how successful are our hotlines that we put in? We put three hotlines in, I think, a year ago, around the last year, for better access for our veterans when in time when they're in time of trouble and strife. How good has that performed? Has it done? improved our accessibility for veterans. What experience are we having with it? So we, we have, um, I believe that the access has improved. We have same day access to care and we're doing everything we can to streamline access. And I actually brought the figures with me in terms of how many people come in under these same day access hotlines. And I can just pull them if, if you'd like. I Please. Off, off the top of my head, I remember over 100,000. Um, but one second, I have the figures with me. Sorry, I can't put my fingers on it this quick, but. That's okay, I do that all the time, so. I'm sorry. I'll, we'll skip, the, I'll let you look, through. you're gonna okay. be here for a while. So yeah. I have the figures with me. But my reason for asking the question was that I, when I went out to the new one that was established in Atlanta, I guess it's over a year ago now, I was astounded how many calls were coming in, how rapid they were coming in. I assumed yes. that that's only gotten better. And from whatever, everything I read about suicide and accessibility and mental health issues, the quicker a person who is in trouble or at risk can make a direct contact with a trained or a professional individual. That's the best you can do. That's the, that's the best thing you can do to get somebody stabilized and, and not have the act of suicide take place before they get some help. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, yes. while she's looking for the figures, um, I appreciate that, that comment. And this committee has uh, been of great help in getting the message out. One of the myths that we had to combat was that when a veteran called the Veterans Crisis Line, that that veteran would be thrown into voicemail. Uh, the system does not have a voicemail capability, and the average wait time uh, for a, a live person on the other end to pick that phone up is eight seconds. Um, 1,700 calls a day, but 1,700 calls that require uh, 200 acts of individual intervention. And, and that is something that we are seeing play out on a daily and weekly basis, and it is the front line in the fight. Well, the reason I brought it up is two years ago, we had a problem with people getting referred to uh, voicemail or call in after 10 tomorrow. Responses that made no sense at all if, in fact, you're at your most risk when you have that time to call and, and know you're having a problem. So I think the fact those things, using telemedicine to do that has been a big help. And I would also add, and Senator Manchin's not here, but we are working with him to create a national three code call in to make the process even easier than it is now. And we've turned over information to the FCC in, in response to what he's been trying to do uh, to make the system even easier. Second question I'll, I'll ask uh, again with regard to suicide. What have, this, what have the numbers looked like the last two years? Was, has it increased, has it decreased, the rate about the same? It has barely gone down. Uh, one of the problems we have is that this is a lagging indicator. Um, we have to wait for reports from thousands of coroners across the country in cities, towns, counties. Um, so the figures that we have uh, fall back on 2016, 2017. We know that two years prior to those figures, uh, the rate of suicide amongst veterans was about 20, 22. Right. It's down to 20. Uh, the, the tragedy there is that 14 of those 20 have no contact with VA. Several are on active duty, several in the Guard and Reserve, as Senator Tester pointed out. And then another tranche, about 10, that we have never, we've never had contact with. Well, I'm glad you answered the question that way because I'll end my time by just saying, say, saying this. The uh, suicide is a terrible thing I had experienced in my own family, and it's a terrible thing to go through for a family. It's something you want to block out and not talk about, but the most important thing you can do is talk about it. And I hope we will understand that victories are not going to be fast or swift, 
when you're dealing with something like suicide. In fact, the, the fact that numbers haven't moved that much or they've moved down a little bit, that's good, doesn't surprise me uh, because it's a very difficult situation to deal with. But the better, we are, the better we do in making our services accessible and our people providing that service educated to deliver the service, the better we're going to be for our veterans, the more over time we will address the subject and we will reduce the rate of suicide. Mr. Mr. Chairman, may I, may I ask your indulgence? One note that I made in my opening remarks, and, I, and I'd like to repeat it, is that this is a process for the military that really has to begin in basic training, um, making our troops aware of signs within themselves and within their comrades. Uh, that is something that was anathema in the military culture that I grew up around. Uh, it is changing. Uh, Secretary Mattis was, was all behind that, and I I took his charge as the Under Secretary of Defense for Personnel to put that in train so that when they enter and when they leave, uh, they are told that it is all right to come to others for help if they feel anxiety, if they feel depressed. And that's the, that's the, the first step in getting this right. Senator Murray. Uh, 